and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. In last video, we finished installing Node-RED on our Oracle VM and now the application is available, right? So now this is the time to go ahead and explore the application and start building something on top of that, right? So get excited. Let's see what we have in agenda. We will understand what is Node-RED admin CLI. That means not just you will learn how to work with UI, but at the same time, you will know how to work with CLI and why CLI, because when you want to scale your application, CLI comes handy. Then we will see uh, introduction to Node-RED component. That means essentially exploring or familiarizing ourselves with Node-RED UI different component so that we are ready to roll out our first application or prototype. That's where we will run some quick simulation. Also, we will not do just the basic stuff, but try to build something uh, which is, I wouldn't say full-fledged, but a prototype. And that's where we will need MQTT. So we are going to install MQTT broker on Oracle VM. And from a Node-RED, we are going to run publisher subscriber and have a end-to-end -end MQTT prototype going on. All right. So let's talk about uh, Node-RED. Node-RED is a visual programming tool that allows users to create complex workflow by connecting nodes and flows. And you will learn what is node and what is flow. The tool is built on top of Node.js, making it easy to use and highly customizable. So Node.js is gaining popularity. It's easy to uh, uh, build application with this framework and Node-RED is essentially built on top of that. So these are the some of the component from Node-RED, palette. Palette is the main component of Node-RED containing all the nodes that can be used to build your workflow. So think of it as, as your arsenal. Each node represent a specific functionality such as reading data from sensor or as simple as sending a email like a webhook. Canvas, Canvas is your playground. Canvas is where user can drag and drop nodes from palette. So you have palette, which has all the nodes, and then you have the uh, canvas, which is kind of your, uh, where you can build workflow by dragging and dropping the, no uh, the nodes. User can also connect node together to define the flow of data through the workflow. And we will see all these things in action when we go to the application. Info and debug uh, panes. So on the other side, you have info, which give you all the information about selected node, its property and configuration option. And also you can debug in real time. So debug will show you the output of each node and of that flow. Then dashboard. Dashboard is another additional component which is not available by default on Node-RED. And I'll show you how to install a dashboard, how to create a custom dashboard. All those things we will do in next video, not in this video. So uh, stay tuned to, for that. Click like, subscribe button so that you know whenever we are posting a new video. Deploy and tabs. The deploy button is used to save and deploy changes made to the workflow, making them live and active. So when you are uh, connecting, uh, placing your nodes, connecting your nodes. This is all kind of like a prep work you are doing. But when you want to uh, bring it in action, you need to work with deploy. Tabs allow user to organize their workflow into different categories, making it easier to manage and navigate through the larger workflow. So enough of literature. Now let's go and hit the application. For that, I'm running in my application. Uh, on Oracle VM, it is running as a local service. And uh, this is the UI available on port 1880. That's the default port for noted services. So we have talked about few components or a few concept. As you can see, this is the Node-RED login screen. On the left side, what you see this different grouping, common function, network, sequence, parser, storage all so this this left hand side of pane is actually your palette within palette you will see the grouping and uh, grouping of nodes so these are all individual nodes these are common nodes like inject 
and if you hover over it you will see the description inject a message into flow either manually or regular interval debug debug is also a, a node which help you show the output on the console screen right and uh, so on we have functions functions javascript which can uh, you, you can do a lot of things right it's, it's javascript you can templatize it you can introduce delay you, you can introduce trigger all these things uh, are important to build or uh, simulate a iot uh, function or iot application right let's look at network which is of utmost interest for us mqtt in mqtt out so if you want to build any industrial or home iot automation system and you want to prototype that you really don't need to have the physical gear in place right you can use node red it's so powerful it let you simulate and prototype your application so we will be playing around with uh, mqtt a lot and so stay tuned for that and then we have sequence like split join like the, the, your regular uh, data structure thing we have parser that means uh, you can parse the output or save the output as a cv csv file json file yaml etc so there are a lot of uh, good things available and you uh, as you play with it uh, and based on your use case you will discover this different functionality going into the functionality of each and every node is going to be like a really time consuming and i'm not sure if we will need all at once hence we will uh, hold on to this and spend time only with the nodes we need in our workflow all right so this is the palette and it provide you the grouping of node this part on this screen flow one you can see this is the gridded scope space and this is called your work uh, work workspace or workflow where you build your uh, workflows right so here you can see you can add flow and also you have something uh, available here that means you can list flow you can add flow from the drop down so multiple functionality available at different places all right so on the right side here the right side of the section you can see you have uh, a pane which has essentially a few buttons here the first one is information and information is uh, to give you information about your workspace so right now i you can see my flow one is empty and global configuration option this is coming from the other flow which i'm going to show you a little bit later or maybe let's see we can hide it right okay so this gives you information about the flow then we have help section that means this is documentation you can uh, go to welcome tour and we are running 3.0.2 so it will present a video what is new with 3.0.2 you can watch that and node help is basically take you to the node or node node red.org for documentation help all right the third one is quite important so once you work with your workflow here you can choose to send the output to debug console and here you will see whatever your application you're prototyping what kind of information they are uh, generating all those things you can see here in debug within debug you have a uh, uh, flexibility to apply filter you don't do so if you have a complex workflow here and you are troubleshooting one of the node whether this one node is injecting or emitting value uh, what is it supposed to do you can f apply a filter and just focus on that node for your debug sessions also you can delete so once you will see that once we start debugging this uh, pane is going to be cluttered or uh, uh, full so you can clear it using trash icon right then this is a gear icon which is mostly about configuration so on your workflow if you have some uh, a node which require configuration that may need require ip address information port information or any other kind of information the those things will be shown here on the drop down again whatever things are available here at the horizontal plane they'll be available in the drop down as well 
okay and as you start installing more component uh, like a dashboard you will see dashboard will appear here as well but this is the default right and then you have deploy on top of this you have the deploy option within deploy as you can see we have various way to deploy a workflow the default is full that means deploy everything in the workspace so whatever you have here in the workspace everything will be deployed right and then what you can do you can either select modified flows so only deploy flow that uh, contains change node or modified node or you can just restart all the deployed flow so based on that how complex or how crowded your flow look like you can choose to deploy everything or maybe you can just choose to deploy one particular flow or a node where you made certain changes right and as we do uh, a mock exercise things will be clear look at this hamburger menu here you can see it's it's like uh, uh, your uh, uh, toolbar so we have edit you can do undo things right you can view things uh, what what you want to see it's typical uh, toolbar right so things which are available they may be grouped here so you can add flow those things you can go to setting and within setting this is your user setting you can see go to a palette and see what are the nodes available you can search node you can enable them disable them you can install new component by searching and we will use install function in upcoming video and some keywords shortcuts etc right so now as you are familiar with this workspace and ui let's build something real quick right so i'm going to redo an example which is available probably on node red org a straightforward example so we have a node called timestamp and then we have another node which is debug what do we want to do we want to inject time and send it to debug node so that we can see the every time it inject a time we can see that here in the debug pane right so right now as i move these uh, nodes in the workspace you can see there is a blue uh, dot here and this blue dot means that these nodes are not deployed they are prepped or they are staged right how to connect the node connecting node is very easy you can simply uh, uh, connect these two by uh, drag and drop and as you can see i am i have already connected these two nodes all right what what else you can do you can now it's good time we can go ahead and deploy things or what you can do you can double click on the node and it will give you um, different uh, information about the this node that what do you want to do you want to inject once or you want to inject continuously and you can add multiple property th properties to this like for debug if you see we are saying that the output is message payload so whatever payload we are receiving that is my output and where i want to see this I want to see this in debug window i can also send it to system console or node status and so on right so this is basically you can you're uh, drilling down into the node itself uh, and ch change the settings all right uh, here i'm looking at property this is description and you can also change the appearance so if you are not uh, happy with the color and how it is appearing you have option to customize it uh, as you can see there are multiple type of icons so you can customize your workflow uh, if, if if there is something you want to personalize you can do that as well all right so let's go ahead we have two nodes um, the objective is to inject a timestamp and it is going to debug and debug in turn is going to um, spit out the output on debug pane right so for deploy since nothing was deployed previously let's say full deploy successfully deployed blue nodes disappeared as you can see we have flow one uh, 
All right. So it is deployed, but it was not injected automatically. I have to press here, and I as I press, it is injecting a epoch time, and epoch time is shown as a message payload here. So every time I hit inject, you can see this is showing up here. Let's see what we can do. We can do something. Uh, Like continuous, you can do something as you can see. This is enabled. You can also go ahead and right click and do a lot of options here. You can delete, you can uh, all those things. Also, if you happen to right click on the workspace, you can see uh, you have option to add new node, junction, etc. Right. So, so far, uh, this is very straightforward. Um, uh, example where we are injecting timestamp and looking at them at the debug screen uh, but this is the epoch time or unix time right not making much sense so let's bring in one function and if you drop in between the line you can see this is automatically uh, taken care here right so what this function is doing functions allow you to write node.js scripts right and uh, you can have your own script and then you can say when you want to execute this uh, script on set uh, startup on message on on stop and all those things you can do right so we want to do as we receive a timestamp so we receive a message we want to convert this epoch time to user friendly time or human readable time for that we are going to write one quick line of uh, code here and then see if that help us change the behavior let me find that code. All right. To save some time, I have it here. This is very straightforward code. As you can see, I'm, what I'm saying that I'm saying message.payload equal to new. And I'm saying that date message payload to ISO string. So whatever payload is coming, change that to ISO string. Right. That's as easy as like going to a website called Epoch Converter and putting this string, and that uh, string will be converted into human readable time. That's what we are doing here as part of Node.js script. All right. So now you can see my flow was deployed and I added another node here. Now only this node has the blue dot because this node is not deployed. Other two nodes were already deployed. So let's go ahead and say uh, deploy only modified node, right? And hit deploy. So as you can see, my node was new node was successfully deployed. And now let's see if the node is deployed, then it is doing the intended function function. I'm gonna click on timestamp. Earlier it was epoch time. Now you can see this is a human readable time so it is working as expected all right perfect so what we are going to do next we are going to uh, integrate node red with something like real world and for that i'm going to take a mqtt broker example so uh, let's see how first we can install mqtt broker so on on the oracle vm you can use any kind of like a, a as a service available VM uh, or MQTT broker, say going to Hive, Hive.MQTT or going to Things Network or where not. But we, we, we will install MQTT because it's a pretty easy installation, right? So I want to run MQTT broker services on Oracle VM. And then since I have the node red services running on the same Oracle VM, I, I want to add MQTT publisher and subscriber and let them talk to the broker node, all right? So for that, what we are going to do, we are going to install MQTT services on Oracle VM. Hopefully it should be straightforward. 